Today, we're gonna take this pile of what most would consider e-waste and turn it in to this. Today, we're gonna be building this gaming system with a budget of $200. Stay tuned. Man, I sure hope this thing doesn't blow up. So everyone knows that the graphics card market is a complete mess right now, and eventually it's gonna solve itself. But in the meantime, we still have to play games, right? So I wanted to challenge myself to build a gaming system for under $200, and I almost did it. Let's go over some of the parts that we're gonna use. To start with, we're actually using an ASUS M5A78L-M. This is a micro ATX motherboard that takes the AM3 socket and DDR3. When you're actually shopping for a used motherboard, make sure you find one with the IO shield because otherwise you're just gonna have a big hole in the back of your case. Now for the processor on this one, we're gonna be using the AMD FX4300. This is a black edition processor. It's a 3.8 gigahertz quad core. All of this right here, I was able to find a motherboard CPU combo, used of course, on eBay for $69.99 that came with similar parts as what I'm using here. Now that combo came with memory, but it wasn't enough memory for what I wanted to use. For this build, what we're gonna use is we're gonna use eight gigabytes of DDR3. And I found a set on eBay for $22.22. .22. Somebody obviously was getting a little creative with their pricing on that one. So for storage, we're gonna use the Western Digital one terabyte spinning disk. Now, I know what you're gonna say. We should be building this thing with an SSD, and I completely agree. I typically will never build a computer with a spinning disk. However, I had to stay under $200, and there was no way I was gonna be able to stay under $200 with a SSD, so we went with a spinning disk. This one here, I picked up for $24.95. However, I've seen these things sell for like 15 bucks before, so you can get a cheap spinning disc just to get you by, and this will give us a great opportunity to upgrade it to an SSD in the future. Now, finally, for a video card, we're actually gonna go with an ASUS 550 Ti. You might ask yourself, why did I go with a 550 Ti? And it's the same reason I went with a spinning disc. I had a budget. Plus, I'm cheap! A $200 budget, and there's no way I was gonna be able to meet that with any kind of graphics card that was higher than that. I had a budget of $40 for my graphics card, and this one I picked up for $44.99, so I actually kind of went over my budget a little bit. And with that said, if you look at the 500 series NVIDIA cards, they didn't perform that much different than the 600 series cards. There actually wasn't a huge jump in performance to the 600 series. And when you look for those used, I found this one here for $495. And honestly, that's ridiculous. However, if you look, the same seller has one that's broken for 200. So, and, and that didn't even count shipping. So honestly, I stuck with the 500 because it was the only one that fit within my budget. And then finally, I'm going with just a micro ATX case. I went ahead and found a new case and power supply that would power the components that we're gonna be using in this system for about $53.94. And this one right here, this is actually my old system. You probably remember it from our last video where we actually polished the acrylic on it. If you wanna watch that video, I'll go ahead and tag it here so you can check it out. Now, if you've been paying attention, you know that I went over my budget a little bit. My budget was $200 and I actually came in at $216.09. And unfortunately that was before tax. So it actually went higher than that. However, that's a pretty good deal for a gaming system. That is of course, if it performs. And to find out, we're gonna have to build it. Now you've seen me build systems in the past and if you want a detailed rundown on how to put a system together, I'll go ahead and tag that here. In the meantime, I'm gonna throw a montage together and get this thing built so we can get to testing it.
So for this to really be considered a gaming system, it actually has to play games. So we're going to go through some popular titles and see how well the system performed. The first game we're going to look at today is Black Mesa. With this game, we got an average of 50.9 frames a second. 1% low was 22 and 0.1% low was 13.4. This game was ran at 1920 by 1080. Anti-aliasing was turned on and most of the settings were set to high. These were actually the default settings. The game ran really good. It was indistinguishable that I was running it on such a low budget system. It was actually ran really good. I didn't experience any problems with this game at all, but of course I didn't because it's such a low resource intensive game. Stuff like this should run just fine on a low budget system like this. So if these are the types of games you play, then this system will work perfect for you. The next game we're looking at today is Counter-Strike. And honestly, CSGO ran really good on this system. It averaged 68.2 frames a second with a 1% low at 28.1. This game also was left on default settings, which was 1920 by 1080. I had any aliasing turned on at 8x, it's MSAA at 8x, and it had mostly high settings. And the game played really smooth. It was hard to tell that I was on such a low budget system. So again, there's no complaints with this game right here. It played really good. Now I know a lot of people like to play CSGO at a much higher frame rate, but let's be realistic. On this system, 68 frames a second is actually really good. So I'm really happy with how this one came out. And I think this one here is definitely a win. You should be able to play this game for hours and not even realize that you're on such a low budget system. The next game we're looking at today is World of Warships. We got 33.6 frames a second with a 1% low of 18.7. As before, all settings were left on default on this one, and that was 1920 by 1080. This one by default set itself to DirectX 11. Any aliasing was turned off, but most of the settings were set to high. This game is another one. This one, the frames were a little bit lower than the other games that we just talked about. At 33.6, it's definitely hitting that bottom rung right there where you don't want to go much lower than that. However, the game itself played really well. The game was smooth and it was a pleasure to play. I could play this for hours on this computer without even complaining about it. Now we can't test a budget gaming system without looking at Grand Theft Auto V. This game played great after we adjusted the settings on it. We definitely couldn't run it at default, but we got an average frames per second at 66.7 with a 1% low of 42. I mean, this is actually pretty respectable for this system. However, we had to bring it down to 720p most of the settings were set to normal. We couldn't set the settings up to high. And honestly, that's because of the VRAM issue on this card. This, only, this card only has one gig of VRAM. So unfortunately, Grand Theft Auto really likes that video memory. So we had to bring everything down to normal. Honestly, because the frames per second were at 66.7, I'm sure that if we had more VRAM on this thing, we could have brought the texture detail up to at least high. But unfortunately, there just wasn't enough VRAM to be able to run this game at anywhere over normal. And I also had to completely turn anti-aliasing off. So as you can see in the video, things are a little jagged, but for the most part though, the game played great. And you know, Grand Theft Auto looks so great anyway, that honestly, even with the graphics pulled back, it still looks pretty good. You know, unfortunately it doesn't look as good as it could look, but what do you want for a $200 gaming system? I actually think this one is another win. It definitely is playable. It's actually really playable. But this game would love to have more video memory, that's for sure. The next one we're looking at today is Shadow of the Tomb Raider. Now this is the first fairly modern game that we're actually using on this system. And this one got us 
30.3 frames a second with a 1% low of 22.2. Now this is definitely playable. However, this one, we definitely were not able to leave it at defaults. I had to drop this down to 800 by 600. I had to change it to DirectX 11 and the graphics preset was set to the lowest possible. And this one had a really weird issue. And honestly, I'm not exactly sure what it was. But if you actually look at the character models in this game, there's a really weird texture problem where it looks like they have leeches crawling all over them. I honestly don't know what's causing it, but I suspect that it's the GPU that's actually causing this. And I searched online and yes, this graphics card only has one gig of VRAM. And I was thinking at first that maybe it was a problem with low VRAM. However, I also had people reporting from the same GPU, the 550 Ti, of experiencing the same problem with cards that had two gigs of VRAM. So honestly, I, I do not think this was a VRAM problem. I think this was a problem with the GPU itself. There's something in the GPU just doesn't render textures properly on Shadow of the Tomb Raider. However, the frames actually were within the limit to where you could play this game if you could handle the leeches crawling all over Lara Croft. Me, I don't know if I could handle that. It would be too much of a distraction while I'm playing. But it's definitely a win. We were definitely over 30 frames a second. And the difference between the 1% low and the average was actually pretty good. So this game actually played really smooth. And other than the weird texture issue, it was an enjoyable game to play. To end this off, I wanted to go through and run the heaven benchmark on this because as we upgrade this computer, we're gonna have to use something as a baseline that's the same across all of the different upgrades that we use. Because you know, the game benchmarks might change as we move up because obviously there's certain games that we just simply can't run on this computer right now because of its low system specs. However, this one, we're actually gonna keep on every video that we do on this system forward so we can compare it to the ones that we did before. It'll at least give us kind of a baseline. However, Heaven, obviously ran horrible on this one right here. We got an average frames per second of 13.6 and the minimum was actually seven. You know, and unfortunately that's just the way it is. This gave us a score of 344. And you know, I wasn't expecting a lot from this. What I did is this benchmark was run with the preset extreme and I did that on purpose. I wanted it to drag this card down as far as it possibly could so we could really kind of watch these numbers go up as we upgrade this computer. So from this point forward, whenever we run the heaven benchmark, it's always gonna be at the extreme preset. So that way we can compare the numbers across the board and kind of see how it grows as we upgrade the system. System. But other than that, it is a gorgeous looking benchmark and it definitely did a horrible job of rendering it at a minimum of seven frames a second with an average of 13. I mean, if this were a game, there's no way you could play it. So as you can see from the benchmarks, this thing actually didn't perform that bad. I'm actually kind of impressed considering the budget we had on this thing. Remember, this system only cost us $200. However, we're not stopping here. I'm actually gonna use this as a baseline and we're gonna follow some common upgrade paths and see what we can do about making this an even better gaming system. So if you have any ideas on what you would do to upgrade this, then please sound off in the comments and let me know. Your idea may actually become a video. If this was helpful to you, then please like this video and don't forget to subscribe to my channel and hit that bell icon so you can be notified of future videos. I post a new video every week. And hey, before you go, check out a couple of these videos. Have a great day.